Hey there, have you ever been out there driving your horse and when it comes down to the rain back, all of a sudden your horse says, no, I'm not going to do that. We've all been there. I've certainly been there many times. I'm going to give you five tips to help you improve your horse's rain back in just a moment. If you haven't met me before, uh, my name is Andy Marku. I'm a professional horse trainer in the sport of carriage driving. I've been training horses for carriage driving for the past 25 years. My website, coachmansdelight.com, is where I share all of my experience and tips and tricks like the ones that you're going to learn in this video. Um, and I do that through blog posts, downloadable lesson plans and articles, and most importantly, online classes. Now, if you've taken an online class with me before, please uh, hit that like button, let me know that you've been there, but most importantly, let the other people who are watching know how much you've enjoyed and how effective those classes are and can be. Also, Drop a little something down in the uh, comment section below. Let everybody know what your favorite class was or if you're signed up for an upcoming class that you're looking forward to. Uh, of course, the phone always rings right when you're getting on Facebook Live. Isn't that the way? Um, so let's get into the five tips that I'm going to provide for you for getting a better rain back. And the first one right off at the top is the one that I feel like is the most important because most people fall into this habit. And that's the pull and hold habit when you go to get your horse to rein back. So many people have done this. You know, they get up to their rein back. Things are getting to be like, you know, everybody's there watching you. You get a little nervous and then you pull and hold and your horse holds there against you. And it's really common. We've certainly all had that problem. But if you really think about it, when you're pulling and holding, you're not using the same language with your horse that you typically use when you're driving your horse. Think about it. If you're doing a uh, trot to walk transition or you're doing a walk to halt transition, what do you typically do? Well, typically you do a couple of nice little half halts. Yeah, two reins, just nice little pump on the reins. Ah, now we know something is coming, right? And then the next thing that you do is you make a request and you relax the reins, right? So you request the downward transition from the trot to the walk. And then once again, maybe a little warning half halt, request the downward transition from the walk to halt. But a lot of times, for some reason, when we get in the carriage and it's time to do that rein back, we'll have this habit of just pulling back and just trying to drag the horse backwards. Well, that's not the same language at all. So the biggest thing that you can do to improve your rein back, rein back right off the bat is make sure that you're actually communicating in the same way that you do during the rest of your drive. So if you're getting ready for the rain back, a little warning, a little half halt. Hey buddy, I'm gonna ask you for something and then request and then relax. Even before he begins to move backwards, most people pull and they wait until the horse is starting to move backwards to, to relax to them. But you know, he's got that whole head and neck out there in front of him for a reason. It kind of helps his balance. And when you pull and hold and you pull his head and neck inward, you're changing that horse's balance significantly. So it's making it more difficult for him to give you that nice rein back. Um, so the, the, the deal of it goes is you just kind of request, relax, and as, as you finish that first request and relax, usually that horse will start to just kind of shift his balance back. And as you feel that horse shift his balance back, that's when you put in the second request and then that's when the first step comes in and relax. And the third request, second step, relax, fourth request, third step. So it's more of a kind of a progressive request and relax 
for getting that rain back. Now that one tip right there is going to go a long way towards getting a better rain back from your horse, but the next four tips are going to make that one tip even more useful. So the next big thing that I'm gonna tell you to be is patient when it comes time to do the rain back. Now, when I set up the announcement for this live broadcast, I put a, an old picture of myself at Walnut Hill with this really cool tandem, right? So I, they're big Argentinian hackneys, they're super cool horses, had a great dog cart for a carriage. Walnut Hill is, you know, was one of the biggest shows in the country. And man, I was really excited to be there and driving that particular turnout that year. And I really wanted everything to go well. But there you are out in front of the crowd and you get that like weird, uh, you know, time warp thing. Like how many have of you have experienced that kind of, it's almost like stage fright, isn't it? Like hit the like button if you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you're there and all of a sudden everybody is looking at you and time slows down. And what feels like an eternity, a minute, two minutes feel like they went by, in reality it's just like five seconds or not even three seconds. So the big piece of advice on this is that what you've got to do when it's time to do that rain back, take a breath, relax for a moment. It's okay, this is not a rain back emergency, people. Like gather your reins, adjust your rain handling position. You know, one thing I noticed in that picture of myself there is that I had the reins, you know, two reins in each hand. And that's not typically how I drive a tandem. I pretty much usually drive in the coachman's position. And that coachman's position is probably the best place to initiate a rein back from because you can put your right hand forward on all four reins or if you're driving a single or a pair, two reins, but you can really nicely pick up and communicate with those reins really symmetrically from that position. But obviously, you know, I was on stage, I was on point, I had to, you know, throw it all out there right then and there, and I probably rushed that rein back and then I got resistance from my wheeler. You can see him with his feet planted, and so I probably countered his resistance with more resistance. Right now I get back into tip number one, which is don't pull and hold, and yeah, I end up in a tug of war with that wheeler. Leaders out there are like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'll just stand around here until you guys have sorted it out back there. I mean, how many times has that happened to you? Have you ever been at a show or an event where you ask for that rain back and you know, that horse just says, oh, you get into that tug of war. Well, oftentimes it happens because you weren't necessarily patient about it. If you've had that happen, you know, drop a little note in the comment. You know, it's always fun to hear everybody else's story. Hey, I'm out here telling you about when I crashed and burned. Maybe you, you can tell me about when you crashed and burned just to make me feel a little better. My God. All right, third tip. Put your intention behind you. Now, if you were here for last week's live broadcast, I told a story about a young driver who got her whole rain back all sorted out in one move just by putting her intention behind her all right so i won't i won't retell you that whole story if you want to hear that story go ahead and look through my past videos and watch the last week's video where i talk about that great mule um but oh yeah if you were there just hit the like button but what happens here is we get so focused on getting that horse there in front of us. I'm gonna get that horse to go this way. I'm gonna get that horse to go backwards. And so all of our intention is in front of us to go backwards. And that's kind of upside down, isn't it? Really, you're trying to get yourself and your carriage, oh yeah, and you're using your horse to do it, to a place back there. So one of the best things that you can do to improve your rain backs is 
focus on a point behind you. You know, one of the things that I love about uh, encountering some 4-H teaching from time to time when I'm out there traveling around the country doing clinics and stuff is that a kid who learned how to drive in 4-H, what do you think the first thing that kid does when he or she goes to rein back with their horse? They check over their shoulder because that's what they're taught. And do you imagine what their reinbacks look like? Benito, beautiful, nice, it's so beautiful, right? They get these beautiful reinbacks because they check behind them, number one, to make sure they're not gonna run over a dog or a kid or you know, bump into another horse. But number two, whether they know it or not, that sets their intention behind them. So at home, the way you can get this little tip to work for you is to decide where you're going to park your carriage and always park your carriage in the same place. You know, set up, if you don't have a place where you keep your carriage in a shed or something like that, but maybe you have it in the ring that you work your horse in or you always keep it in the barn, set up a little parking space for your, for your carriage. And at the end of your drive every day, figure out how to get that carriage into that parking space. And that's where I really learned this skill. I used to drive this pair of uh, Fjords and they had, you know, big, heavy, appropriate carriage. It was probably six or 800 pounds, but where we kept the carriage was in a pole barn with loose stone for footing. Me as a one person, you know, I'm not a huge guy, putting a 700 pound carriage away in a pole barn with loose stone footing was next to impossible. And so what I decided, I was like, man, why am I doing the horse's work? Why don't I just go ahead and use the horses to put the carriage away? Which, you know, got the job done. But guess what? When spring came around and it was time to show those horses, do a little combined driving, do a dressage test. And I show up at the end of my dressage test and ask for a rein back. Man, do you think after putting that carriage away in heavy stone footing, like parking it between the manure spreader and the tractor, how hard do you think stepping back four steps back was for me in a dressage test. Oh, you want those four steps straight? Are you kidding? That's a piece of cake. Usually I have to kind of like jimmy it in. This is great. So that's a really cool little trick that will get you awesome at your rain back. All right, so now the next tip is something maybe counterintuitive. Maybe this will make sense to you, maybe it won't. But improve your halt. Getting a better halt will actually give you a better rein back. And let me explain to you why. The halt, yeah, it's not only the prelude to the rein back, but it sets up your horse's balance and it sets up your horse's immobility. So. If your horse is coming into the halt and he kind of stops all crooked, he's got his legs all akimbo, one leg's over here, one leg's over there, and he's kind of resting a hip, and he's all, you know, cattywampus to your carriage. Do you think, do you think a straight rein back is gonna come out of that? I guarantee you a straight rein back is not gonna come out of a crooked halt. Um, on top of that, if, all right, you go into that like funky, crooked halt. And he's like, yeah, I'm just gonna be like cool. And he's shifting his weight from side to side. And he's kind of, he's like, whatever, come on, we gotta do the rain back thing. And you're not establishing immobility in your halt. You're gonna have a lot of tr trouble with that rain back because if he's not immobile, his balance never stops moving. So if you don't have an immobile halt, that's the first thing that I want you to focus on. I want you to teach that pony how to stop and stand and be fully immobile. Like practice like 30 seconds of immobility before you start bothering with that rein back because you want him to have like really good solid balance going into that rein back. Now, Getting that immobility is all about teaching your horse how to stand. And of course, you probably know that I'm teaching a class tomorrow night at nine o'clock. So tomorrow night, but an hour later, 
all about getting your horse to stand and be immobile. And yeah, that training starts in the barn. It's super duper basic. It's really easy to do. But you start in the barn and you get the horse to be still and immobile and hands free. You don't have to be holding them. And then you bring that training out into the ring. And then you progress that training into the carriage, get him immobile in the carriage. And then you carry that training forward into your work. And pretty quickly and easily, you get that immobile halt. Now, the thing to get the horse straight in the halt is to go ahead and start practicing those transitions. And a lot of people make the mistake of doing your transitions from the trot to halt because they think that that's some higher level of movement. Man, your horse doesn't have the opportunity to balance, especially if he's not like a really collected, really high level horse. So you want to trot and then transition into the walk, get a good solid walk, and then halt nice and straight. That transition through the walk gives you a chance to get really nice and symmetrical on the dressage, on your uh reins so that you can get that pony nice and straight, ask for the halt. Now you've got a straight halt. Now you're going to create a nice straight back because you allowed him to show up in the halt in a very controlled, balanced manner. Now, as you practice those transitions, as you kind of build your horse's skill from going trot, walk, and I mean like four strides of the four steps of walk at least. Trot, walk, two, three, four. Halt, two, three, four. You develop a really nice rhythm. And then as your horse's collection improves and his engagement improves, yeah, you can start doing three steps of walk and then two steps of walk. And then as he's really fit and really getting his balance of you know, transitioning into that halt, then we can go to two or one step of halt, of walk into the halt, and then eventually your advanced level and you're stepping right into it out of the trot. But you've got to build it from the ground up. So get that immobility first, do that transition from the trot to the walk to the halt, and then you'll be able to build on that and get a great rain back. Now, the most obvious tip of all of them is practice. You've got to practice the rain back, not just when you show up to the end of your dressage test. I mean, I'm laughing because I've done this a million times. You know, you start working a horse and you're excited because you're going to go to a pleasure show or you're going to go to a combined driving event and you really want to have that horse's you know, trot really, really rhythmic, really steady trot. And then that walk like really forward and really, you know, snazzy. And then maybe you start working on some lengthenings and stuff like that. You, you, you work on all that stuff, right? You devote time to work on your horse's lengthening. You devote time to work on your own accuracy as you're driving your dressage. You devote time to work on cones and hazards. How much time do you actually devote to train your horse to rein back? And I've gotten caught on this one more than once. You go on around, man, you just drove this really great dressage test. Come up that center line, do that nice transition to the halt that I was just talking about, and then realize, oh, man. I really haven't worked on the halt with this horse much at all, or the, the rain back with this horse much at all, right? And now the chips are down. Now you're a little nervous. Now your horse is a little nervous. Now you start falling back into old habits, and all of a sudden you get into a pull and hold situation with your horse. And your horse doesn't recognize what you're asking for because you haven't spent time at home really focusing on that skill. So the place to focus on that skill would be, you know, like do a little bit of ground driving. 
try a little bit of rain back on the, with your ground driving. If that's not going well, do it in the cross ties. Teach your horse to rein back without any tack on. Because you know what, maybe he's not that good at it yet. And progressively, just like the tra stand training, take each part and piece of that training and progressively move it out into the arena and into the carriage. So that's just, those are my five big tips on the rain back. Uh, it's just a short video and I, I hope that it helps. Uh, let me know in the comment section, you know, number one, if you have more questions about this. Uh, and number two, if you feel like we need to talk about this more. Uh, you know, I could give an entire class on this on just this subject alone, but I'm not sure if that many people would be interested on in an entire class just on training the rain back. But I'll tell you what, I got a horse in a barn somewhere over uh, yonder that definitely needs this training. So maybe we could work together on that a little bit. Another thing that I'd love to see in the comments section would be, uh, where are you from? You know, where are you joining me from? It was really fun last week when I asked that right at the top of the, the discussion, you know, hey, I'm, I'm joining you from Massachusetts where it's about, I think, five or 10 degrees right now. Um, and I asked you to let me know where you're joining from. And we got people from all over the globe and a lot of people from New Zealand and Australia, which was a lot of fun for me to see because I'm pretty sure I'm hoping you guys are going to be sending me a plane ticket real soon, like maybe at the end of this week, because I could come down there next week, you know, because it's warmer down there. <laughs> all right. So um, I think that's about it. Tomorrow night, I just want to let you know that I'm doing that stand training class. And that's probably one of my most popular classes of all of my online classes, because not only does it help you teach that immobility to your horse, but the training that your horse gets in learning the stand training uh, carries over all the way through into all of your horse's training. And uh, I've seen so many horses who had massive behavioral issues under saddle or in the carriage that when we applied this stand training to the horse, all of a sudden all of the other training that the horse was having trouble with got a lot easier because he learned better how to listen to the communication and of course his equestrian learn better how to communicate with him. So I hope that you'll join me for that class. If you haven't signed up for that class, go ahead on over to coachmansdelight.com to check out that class. And I'm gonna take an awkward moment to read the comments to see if there's a question or two that I haven't come up with. Uh, so Lana was just pointing out something about dressage, about getting the four wheels straight on the carriage. And she uh, was talking about maybe using the fifth wheel brake in the rain back. And that's okay. It used to be that you were not allowed to use the fifth wheel brake on a dressage carriage. So for those of you who are not familiar with what in the world a fifth wheel brake in the first place is, basically, You've got the fifth wheel, which is uh, where your carriage turns, it's kind of the rack and pinion of your carriage, even though it's not a rack and pinion, that's a totally different steering system. Uh, in a lot of carriage, a lot of modern carriages, we have a brake on that. And that brake was originally designed to help reduce fishtailing. You know, if you're going around a corner super duper fast, and then all of a sudden, whoa, you lose the back end of the carriage, you could punch that fifth wheel brake, and it would just kind of lock up the steering on the carriage for a moment, just long enough to get your, your wheels to gain traction. And that was a really good tool for that. But of course, people figured out pretty quickly, hey, wait, if I use that to lock up the steering when my horse is about to do a rein back, yeah, now I won't jackknife when I rein back. Two things on that. I mean, yes, it works, but secondly, it doesn't 
take care of the root problem. If your carriage is jackknifing when you're doing the rain back, chances are it's because your horse is stopping uneven. His hips are slightly out of line with the front end of his body. And when he goes to lay, rein back, he'll end up kind of throwing that one hip into the breaching first. And that's all it takes to get those shafts to tip to one direction just a little bit. And then all of a sudden everything gets all out of kilter because that carriage will jackknife pretty quickly. That's where I love the parking spot practice at home. If you practice with backing your carriage into a very specific parking spot, just put like four cones out or a couple of ground rails um, that you have to back straight up between. And you keep working that skill at home, pretty soon that fifth wheel brake will, won't, won't be useful to you in the dressage ring anymore because you won't need it. You'll, you'll have figured out how to get that horse to come back straight. Okay, wow, what a great crowd we had tonight. And uh, somebody, Rosie was just asking me to relist the five tips and I absolutely will do that right now. So the five tips are, we start at the top with uh, no pulling and holding, all right? Don't pull and hold, communicate the rain back, okay? Make sure you're communicating on the reins. Tip number two, be patient. Take your time, don't rush that rain back. Tip number three, put your intention behind you instead of in front of you trying to get that horse to come backwards. Think about getting yourself and your carriage back to a target, like a parking spot, and everything will start to settle down quite a bit. You'll do much better communication with your horse when you're more clearly communicating what you intend. Uh, fourth tip is improve your halt. Work on those trot to walk to halt transitions. Work on your horse's immobility at the halt. It will help a lot, trust me. He'll be much more ready for the communication that you practice in the first three or four tips. And then tip number five, practice this. Set some time aside, decide, you know, today I'm going to work on my trot walk transitions, but mostly I think that I'm going to work on that rain back. Set the time aside to work on that skill. All right, I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate everybody joining me here. Uh, once again, throw a comment out there. Let me know where you joined from, and I hope that you'll join me online for a class soon. Go over to my website, coachmansdelight.com, to check out what classes are coming up. Join me tomorrow night for teaching your horse how to stand. Everybody, have a great rest of the day. Take care.